Hello boys and girls, welcome back. It's Fun Story Factory time. We've got yet another book for you. It's called Rose the Cat Dog. Shall we begin? Rose the Cat Dog. Rose is a cat dog. Can you see her? The lovely little white dog sitting at the bottom of the picture. What else can you spot in the picture? Can you see the cup? And the saucer and how many cushions can you count on the cat? She keeps to herself. She loves to lick her paws. She likes to keep herself clean, doesn't she? She does not play fetch. Her favourite way to play is by rolling around on top of other people's stuff, although she does tire out pretty quickly. Can you see her sleeping? And she's got the remote control on top of her, hasn't she? She only eats until full, never more. See, she's left some food in her bowl. She most certainly does not like going for walks. Do you have a dog that doesn't like going for walks? Most dogs love going for walks, don't they? So she's a little bit different, isn't she, Rose? Shall we carry on? Don't get me wrong. I know not all cats are like this. Even so, Rose's family usually thought of her as more like an average cat than dog because of all her unique behaviour. So as much as Rose may not have liked it, and she really did not like it, her family took her for walks anyway. One day, on just such a walk to the park, Rose overheard two dogs talking. My humans have a baby on the way. As dogs, it's our duty to protect them, play with them, mine too, and love them too. Rose was listening very closely from nearby. Oh no, she thought to herself, my humans also have a baby on the way and I don't know how to do any of those dog-like things. Rose thought this way because she'd had a very different type of puppyhood than most of the other dogs she knew. You see, Rose was a rescue dog. Rescue dogs come from different types of places, sometimes from homes that just can't keep them anymore, but often from places that are really not that good at all. That is why they need to be rescued or saved by people like Rose's humans or by special organisations dedicated to finding them new homes. In Rose's case, she was rescued from a really not so nice place. She never had any toys, treats, hugs, room to play, or even a name. Because of this, she also never learned everyday dog things. Instead, acting like a cat dog had kept her safe. And that is why she developed such careful and quiet feline ways. It was a hard habit to break even after she joined her humans in their forever home. Can you see her? I wonder which one of those is Rose. Can you spot? But even though they look very similar, there is a difference, isn't there? Perhaps you've got a dog from a rescue home. Well, ready or not, before Rose knew it, the baby was born. Now Rose knew that her humans were okay with her, just the way she was, since they were the ones who had rescued her. But now she was the baby's dog too. Taking one look at her new little human sister, Rose decided right then and there that she couldn't be her cat dog self any longer. Instead, she would have to start acting like those dogs in the park. The only problem was that Rose didn't know how to be like other dogs, but she was determined to figure it out. Rose's first chance to try came unexpectedly that very afternoon. Everything was quiet. The baby had just gone down for a nap and then someone knocked gently on the apartment door. Can you see the baby? 
Isn't she beautiful? Upon hearing this, Rose thought, I guess this is my chance to protect my little human sister from the sound that's going to wake her up. So Rose ran down the hallway, barking all the way to let whoever it was know to stop making so much noise. So there's a knock knock on the door and a wah from the baby and a bark from Rose. But it was Rose's barking that actually woke the baby. Rose decided she would have to keep trying to act more like a regular dog and not her usual cat dog self until she got it right. And look, she's sleeping next to the beautiful baby. Rose knew that dogs are supposed to play with their little human sisters too. Still, she just didn't think things like chasing bulls were that much fun. Remember? She does not play fetch. Rose never did manage to bring back the ball, which made the baby cry. Well, not all dogs are clever to bring back the ball, but she's trying very hard, isn't she? All of the crying was making Rose upset and annoyed with herself, even though she really did love the baby. She never seemed to have enough energy to play with her the way she thought she should. She tried to make things better by sharing one of her own favourite activities with the baby. Even so, it seems like babies don't like having their mm, paws licked all the time. It would make the baby cry every time. Rose tried and tried and tried. Sticky baby hands and feet sure are tasty, Rose thought as she tried yet again. Can you see the baby's crawling away from Rose? And she's got her tongue out. She's been licking the baby's feet. One day, Rose was in a particularly good mood. She didn't know if it was because she'd had a great night's sleep after squeezing herself under her human's bed to get away from them when they tried to trim her nails, or that she had been lucky enough to come across some freshly cleaned and still warm towels to roll around on top of after an especially cold, wet and unpleasant walk. Whatever the reason, Rose decided to share her happiness with the baby by giving her some Rose kisses. Rose kisses were Rose's way of showing love. She would give them by going up to someone and rubbing and bumping her head against whichever part of the person she could reach over and over again. So far, only her two humans had been lucky enough to receive them. Do you have a dog that rubs his head against your leg? Rose found the baby sitting on the couch, eating snacks out of a bowl in her lap. Rose was in such a good mood she ran right up her doggy steps and over to the baby, giving her some really strong and wholehearted rose kisses on the arm. At first, the baby laughed because Rose had never done anything like this before. And it kind of tickled anyway. But then all of the head bumping toppled the baby over onto her side. Her bowl fell to the floor, spilling treats everywhere. The baby's laughter became loud cries of unhappiness. Rose felt bad. That did not go as planned. Still, she hopped off the couch and ate up all the treats. A cat dog knows to never let food go to waste. This only made the baby cry even more. Can you imagine the baby's lost her treats and now she's seeing them being eaten up all by the little dog Rose? Nothing Rose did seemed to be working. Everything she tried just made the baby cry. She wondered why wanting to protect, play with and love the baby was turning out to be so hard. Unsure of what to do next, Rose headed to her favourite place under the living room end table to do some thinking. Rose spent a lot of time under that table over many days and weeks trying to figure out what to do next. Well, 
She would have been under there a lot anyway, since it was her favourite place to get away from everyone. Still, she did do a lot of extra thinking about the baby and how to be a good dog while down there. On Halloween, the family were getting ready to go trick-or-treating. Rose was under the table again, feeling sad about not behaving like the type of dog she thought she needed to be. She didn't want to go anywhere. All the same, her family took her as long as usual. As they walked from house to house, the baby sucked on her binky, which is also known as a dummy, isn't it? which was her most favourite thing in the world. Then the worst thing that could ever happen, happened. While leaning over the stroller and looking back at some passing kids in bright costumes, the baby sneezed and her binky shot out of her mouth and onto the ground behind her. Bouncing out of sight from everyone, including her parents who were looking the other way. Out of sight to everyone, that is, except for Rose, who had been hiding behind her humans to avoid a group of young trick-or-treaters who wanted to pet her. You'd probably not be surprised to learn that Rose did not enjoy meeting new people. Can you see her? Dog has spotted the binky, hasn't she? And the baby's crying. Should we see what happens now? The binky stopped its bouncing right under Rose's nose. The baby had already begun to fuss about it, nearly in tears. Looking from the binky to the baby and back again, Rose suddenly realised, I can protect the baby if I get the binky back to her before she starts crying. With her heart swelling with love, Rose did the only thing she could think of next. She began to play with the binky by dropping down and rolling around on top of it with all her might. I think she's trying to draw everyone's attention to it. What do you think? Rose's humans had forgotten the backup binky at home and were now frantically searching the area in front of the stroller. They stopped when they noticed Rose rolling around on top of something, like she had never rolled around on top of something before. Knowing Rose, they knew it had to be something really important for her to move like that. She didn't even seem to be tiring out yet, which must have been a new record for her. At home, that would mean it was probably something like a cell phone or a favourite newly clean sweater underneath her. Could it be the binky now, since they were out here on the street? Once they got Rose to stop, Boy, she really did love a good roll on top of her important stuff. It was the binky underneath her. Seeing this, the baby's fussing stopped immediately, replaced by a toothless smile from ear to ear. What the baby did next was something she had never done before. Instead of reaching for her binky, she reached for Rose. Isn't that lovely? Rose is a cat dog. By being herself, she saved the day. More time passed. The baby is older now. She even has a little sister who is not so small herself anymore. Even after all this time though, Rose is still her cat dog self and the girls love her for it. They protect her and play with her just the way she likes it, not too much. So this story tells you that it's okay to be yourself because you are unique. There's only one of you and you don't have to be like anyone else. And that's a lovely happy ending. We're going to see you again soon on Fun Story Factory for another story. Bye bye for now. Welcome back boys and girls to another fabulous story on Fun Story Factory. Today we're reading The Lollipop Fairy by Yana M. Anderson and it's all about little children that receive a lollipop on the day before their birthday and it's meant to be a tradition. So I'm very excited to read this. Are we going to, are we all ready to sit down and listen? 
Okay, shall we begin? So I'm going to read what the birthday tradition is. Number one, lollipop seed arrives. Number two, you read the story together. Number three, you plant the seed by midnight. And number four, you wake up to a lollipop garden on your birthday. Doesn't that sound like fun? Should we see what happens? In all the world, there is no one like you. You are dearly loved all year through. But tomorrow is your special day. That one moment in the year we call your birthday. A day that is all about you. A day that tells us how much you grew. So with excitement, we say... The lollipop fairy is on her way to help you celebrate her favourite day. Your birthday. Is it your birthday today? Was it yours this week? Did you get a lollipop? Did you get nice presents? Shall we carry on? The lollipop seeds have arrived for you to plant far and wide. One seed per year makes each lollipop appear. So your seeds get ready for bed and dream about your day ahead. Sleep well, sleep tight. Tomorrow you will awake to a lollipop delight. Who doesn't love lollipops? Are you turning one, two, three or four? There is always one more lollipop than the year before. Five, six, seven or eight? So many sweet, delicious lollipops I can hardly wait. Whether they are red, yellow, orange or blue or a colourful swirl of more than two. Each one means another year here. Happy birthday! And one more reason for all of us to cheer. Yay! Everyone's very excited and happy for birthdays, aren't they? Enjoy your sugar swirls. Enjoy your special day. Goodbye, lollipop fairy. One more year until you are back this way. 364 days later, the lollipop fairy tradition in our home over the years. So the author has given lollipops to her children over the years. And she said they are the greatest joy and sweetness in her life. And I'm sure you are too for your parents. So how about everyone go and get a lollipop for their birthday? Wasn't that lovely? And a delicious book. It looks yummy enough to eat. Bye bye for now and see you very soon again on Fun Story Factory. Don't forget to like and subscribe and maybe watch many other books on my wonderful channel. See you soon. Take care.